the Internet of Things is all the things that are connected around us to the Internet. Today, when we talk about the Internet, we mean the people connected, and we make a differentiation about the Internet of Things, the sensors, the wearables, uh, the glasses that are connected to the Internet. But eventually, I believe we're going to all call it again the Internet, and it's everything that's connected, people and things. For a CIO, the Internet of Things is going to be a huge step. When you think of the Internet of Things, it's yet another step beyond outside the firewall for the CIO. Originally, the CIO owned the software, then there was the time of so software as a service, SaaS. Now we have edge computing. It's a whole new paradigm. And the same applies when you think of hardware. The CIO owned hardware, then it became hosting, it became again software as a service, and now there's sensors out there. It's a whole new set of hardware. It's a whole new set of requirements on the hardware. And those two shifts, both on software as well as hardware, are significant for the CIO. When we think of IoT, there's some real obvious examples in the manufacturing area or in, an, in the enterprise to improve efficiency. And the example that always comes to my mind is a pump on a manufacturing floor where we already have a sensor on it. And these sensors today easily measure current, they measure vibration, they measure temperature. What's really interesting about this is, and what we can do today is, not just measure it, not just read it, not like in the old days of the internet where we had static pages and just read the information. Over time, we started transacting with that information and transacting with, uh, on the internet. The same thing is happening with sensors. We're going to start interacting and transacting and doing with the sensors. So think of that pump. Think of the pump having a malfunction, the current spikes. And now think the machine knowing if I tune down just by this much, 10%, that spike won't happen. It by itself tunes it down, and then maybe it deploys a drone or a robot or something fancy, right? But really, it did it on its own. It didn't need human intervention. Why? Because there is a hundred other of those machines out there, and it learned from them and knew what to do with that. So that's really a great example of IoT, not just sensing, but also doing. It's really easy to get enterprise examples. It's easy to get efficiency gains. What really excites me is though, when we start talking about consumer examples, not only is there a huge transformational shift for the company, but it's also often has human impact. And what I think of when I think of human impact is of life science examples. Think of cancer patients. Every mile they live further away from a cancer treatment center, their management of their sickness gets worse statistically. So imagine now you had a sensor that you can send home with a cancer patient. You could measure if they take their medication. You could measure if they follow the regimen you gave them. And not only could you measure that, but you could incent them. Today we have the simple notification stuff where your watch vibrates. But imagine if there's some extra treatment that you'd give them with new technology. For me, that really is human impact. And that's going to significantly shift the model for many companies out there and that's IoT at its best.